QuickBooks Online 2023. Progress invoicing example number two, invoice client, receive payment and record expenses for month number three. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file. We started up in a prior presentation, remembering that we're in the accounting view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top, switch the view on down below, duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it. Back to the tab to the middle reports on the left hand side and we want to open up one of the faves that being the balance sheet report as it's thinking tab to the right reports on the left this time the profit and loss report closing the hand boogie change in the range 010125 to 06325 let's make this month by month on the breakout and run it so this is what we have recognized in February. Let's go back. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it to the prior tab and close the boogie and change the range we want this one to be going from 010125 to 06325 and let's see this one by class and say run it let's go to the first tab let's go to our projects on the left hand side and we're in project number two so if i go back to our excel worksheet just to recap what we have done thus far we had an estimate that we made we build the client uh, for the estimate we we for the ten thousand i'm sorry we build the client for ten thousand down payment on it and then we figured our expenses for the first uh, month that we worked or month number two, and we recognized the revenue so that we had that nice matching of the revenue and the cost of goods sold, as we can see over here in our month by month breakout, which happened in uh, February. So now we're going to bill the client. Let's do that in Excel first. And we're billing according not to as we do the job, but rather we're billing in accordance with our schedule that we came out to. So we said, we're going to bill you client based on our pre arrangement. Uh, and so now it's going to be month number three, we're going to bill you 25,000. Uh, we're still have our estimate up to the 100,000. So we're going to say, all right, from a journal entry standpoint, straightforward, we're just going to say bill in the client three, one, this is going to be equal to the 25,000 that we're going hold on a second. <laughs> This is going to be equal to the accounts receivable account for the amount of 25,000. And then the other side is going to go to, uh, the other side is going to not go to revenue because we're recording revenue according to our, our calculations over here, but rather we want it to be going to the billings account. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky in QuickBooks. All right, so we're gonna do that. All right, so let's go back on up and say that we've got accounts receivable. There's something in it, even though it's zero. So I'm gonna double click on it, go to the end of it and say plus that 25,000. And then in the billings, I can also do that. There's something in it in R6. So I'm gonna say F2 plus F2 and then 25,000 on the billings. So it goes up to the 35,000. So that's, and that allows us of course to send the invoice out to the client and hopefully receive payment on it because obviously the invoice is the best form to kind of turn over most of the times to get paid on the invoice so if i do that over here we could say let's how can i mirror a similar kind of process we can go drop down let's do an invoice 
This time, I'm gonna pull in the invoice from the estimate. And so I'm gonna use my progress invoicing tool and add this on in, but I wanna do 25% of the invoice according to our billing schedule. And I'll say, uh, copy it over and close up the hand buggy. And then it pulls in nicely and gets each line item, shows nicely each night line item for the client and everything. And so this happened on, we're gonna say 3-1, 3-1. So that, everything looks good, but this will increase uh, the accounts receivable, which is what we want, but the other side is gonna go to the revenue accounts driven by these items, which is not what we want. So I could like replace these items with, a, with another item that, that takes it to the work in progress, but I kind of like having the items here. So what I'd like to do then is basically redo, make it so it's not gonna go to the revenue account and instead we want it to go to the billings account is the general idea. So I could make an item that's gonna reduce revenue. So all of these items went to that revenue account. This is gonna bring it back down for a negative of 25,000, class number two. And so that brings it back down to zero. And then I'm gonna put it where I want, which is the billings account. Billings account. And I'm gonna put it back in 25,000 into the billings, class number two. So what this, what this does, it's a little bit tedious because now, now I'm gonna have the revenue accounts recording increases by these amounts and then a decrease and then it's gonna to go to the billings account. But on the plus side, it pulls in all that information from the invoice quite nicely, from the estimate, I mean, into the invoice so that the client can see kind of like the detail of the line items of the invoice quite nicely. And then these two amounts hopefully don't bother the client much that we can basically just tweak the journal entry for our internal reporting purposes. And then I can still send the invoice to the client just as we normally would and you know receive payment on it from the invoice so what's this going to do it's going to increase uh it's an invoice it's an invoice so it's going to increase the accounts receivable by the amount down here the other side would have gone to revenue because of these line items and still will but we're going to reverse it back out of revenue for with this line item and instead increase the billings account okay let's save it and close it check it out check it out we're going to go to the reports and so now we've got the the reports over here accounts receivable is going up so the accounts receivable went up uh so so there is that and then it's kind of interesting the way it broke out the project and then the total for <coughs> total for customer uh two here uh, because I broke this out by customers. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to break it out by classes. That's why it looks funny to me. Okay. All right. So there we go. So then it went to uh, accounts receivable, which isn't going to be specified by the classes. Okay. And then the other side though, went to the billings, which is specified by the classes. So that's quite nice because now if I have multiple classes, I can see the breakout with this class structure and of the billings okay tab to the right if i run this one we did not record any revenue related to it which is what we want because this tool was used just for billing purposes so that we can increase the accounts receivable and we put the other side uh, into the billings and now let's imagine that we receive the money so if i receive the money from a journal entry standpoint it would just be okay then it would, let's say this happened on 315 cash would go up they're going to pay us because we sent them a nice invoice which is easy for them to figure out and deal with and so they're just going to pay us that twenty five thousand, which is great there's our debit and credit checking account's going to go up i'm going to put my cursor in, in r3 f2 on the keyboard plus f2 scroll back down pick up that twenty five thousand. So there it is. And then the other side's going not to revenue, uh, but accounts accounts receivable. I'm sorry, <laughs> the other side's going to accounts receivable. 
So we're gonna say double click on it, plus nothing fancy, nothing tricky is what I'm trying to say. That wasn't an unusual thing for to be happening. All right, so there's the other side going to accounts receivable. Let's go ahead and go back on over here and do it in our accounting system. So we're gonna say that's gonna be a receive payment form, receive payment and project two, it's gonna happen. We're saying on 315 that we're gonna get the payment. Okay, MUI B to the N. And then we're gonna say, check that off. And that should just receive payment, reduces accounts receivable. The other side going into the good old checking account. No I problema. Tab to the right, run it. So checking account is going up, accounts receivable goes back down. And if we just compare our balances, we got 21,981.82 in our checking account and 20,982, 16,923.40, 16,923 rounded, 35,000, 16,923. So 16,923, 35,000 net income, 3,905, 3,905, 3,905. Everything's matching up as it should. All right, now let's say that we have our expenses that we're gonna do for the next month. So ex expenses for March in this case. So I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna, we're gonna just make up kind of our expenses numbers here. And so the, the expenses are going to be, let's say 10,000 this time for the materials. And then I'm gonna say that it was 9,000 for the labor and we're gonna say it's 527 for the overhead. If I sum that up, that's gonna be for a total of 19,527. Now, if I, if I say, well, how, how comp what percentage of that is to the total, to my total expenses, that divided by the total expenses that we're projecting, 76,923, I'm gonna, copy the formatting here to uh, percentify it. It's been percentified and decimalized with a percent and a bunch of decimals. And then I can say my revenue then that we'll do next time is the 100,000 times that, that I would like to basically recognize because that's how done we are at this time. But right now we're just gonna record the expenses, these items. All right, so let's do that. So I'll go back on over here and we'll go to First tab, drop down, expenses, expenses. This is gonna be for project, or we're gonna say for our one vendor, just generic vendor, this happened. Well, let's put this on the 31st. All of our expenses, we'll just record here. I'm gonna delete them so I can just re-enter them so we can check it out. So the first one's gonna be labor, which we said, was 10,000, 10, 10,000. We're gonna make it billable so I can then pull it into the invoice, not so we can send the invoice to the client, but so we can recognize the revenue on the invoice. And we'll do that next time. 30% markup because that's our standard markup. And then the class is gonna be class number two. And then we'll say that we've got the labor Labor is going to be 9,000, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken. And I rarely am mistaken. Actually, I'm mistaken quite often, but still, I like to. Anyways, overhead. Overhead. That was. That was uh, 527. 527. Five two seven, okay. Class number two. All right, and then when we pull that over into our invoice for revenue recognition, we'll do next time. It'll come over at the thirty percent increase. So thirteen thousand plus eleven seven plus six fifty eight ten twenty five three fifty eight, and that should twenty five. Uh, 25385. It's backwards. I think I just put it in the calculator back. Well, let me do it again. 13,000 
thousand eleven seven hundred six eighty five six eighty five and then if I go back on over here uh, we have it twenty five three to five okay 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 it's good it's still good so what's this gonna do it's gonna increase uh, it's gonna decrease the checking account the other side is gonna be going into the cost of goods sold because that's where all these items are directed so let's go to save it and close it and check it out if we may run in the report we've got the checking account is going down no I don't like it when it goes down on the checking account but then the other side is gonna go to the income statement income statement running it on a month by month breakout and we could see it's now been applied uh, to March so now we've got March of, of the expenses and next time we would like to recognize the rivet the revenue not for the 25,000 that we build but rather for the related revenue in our kind of like percentage of completion kind of concept over here uh, as we go so that's what we'll do next time just remembering we got this month by month breakout also if I break this up from to 123125 and run it then we can break this out by class because we broke it out by classes too and so now we've got these two classes which is quite nice uh, of, a, of a breakout and we've got the projects so I can break it out by project over here where we can see basically an income statement per project and also again the classes kind of help us out if I look at the balance sheet for example to 1231.25 to 12 3125 also help us out to track these work in process accounts the balance sheet accounts by uh, by job which so that's that's could be could be useful as well and we'll see that uh, coming into play when we finish the job so we'll continue on next time recording the revenue for uh, March